Okay, so um, welcome. Today we're joined by Stefan Carr. Stefan is a CEO of a company called Snowfall. Uh, we're delighted that they're joining us at the uh, Travel Weekly Globe's Travolution sister title uh, in a few weeks' time as sponsors of the after show party. So um, we're really delighted that you're going to be there, Stefan, and you're supporting us in, in, that, uh, in that event because it's going to be a great one. We've had to delay the, um, the Globes till from its usual slot in, in January for obvious reasons, but we're looking forward to a, a great night in, in March. So thanks very much, Stefan, for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. And we look very much forward to be there. And as I said, like it's been delayed and with the pandemic, I think it's great to, to get back to these events again uh, yeah, after yeah. You know, a long time. Yeah, I think the industry is desperate to, to, to get back together and um, really missed, missed the, the opportunity to do that in January. Um, let, let, let's kick things off. What, why don't you talk to us about, about Snowfall, about Junction, which you, you launched back in, I think it was in November. I, I saw you at the, uh, the Aviation Festival in London, which was sort of the official launch time. Um, T tell us what it is first, and then we can talk about it in a bit more detail. No, definitely. I think, uh, I mean, as, as we, we talked about back then, I think, you know, Junction has been on our side in, in the making for quite some time. And, and there is obviously, uh, with everything that's happened, even more so with the pandemic, you know, the need to kind of truly look at what's happening from a technology space sector in the, in the travel ecosystem, right? And Junction is really uh, driving that new ecosystem uh, in, in connecting all the different players in the market, whether you are a content provider as an operator uh, of you know, air, train, you know, ferry, bed banks, whatever it is, yep. together with the reseller segment, and whether you are a traditional travel agency or you know, the new types of reseller that we're seeing in the market, and where you're seeing a lot of these fintech super apps coming in, which you know, want to sell you different things, including travel at the moment. And, and we think it's, it's, it's really the need because the it's so silified today uh, where air, train, ferry, there is no single platform that handles this in, in a good way. Uh, and we're really truly driving that multimodal aspect. Uh, and, 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 you know, key driver for this is obviously the technology angle uh, and the end user experience, which is terrible, cost, but also, you know, sustainability in, in terms of, you know, the push towards train and other more, you know, sustainable modes of travel. France yeah. is banning short haul flights. And, and, you know, we really, really, you know, built uh, a new, really great ecosystem, you know, with open and, and unified API model to, to drive that for the future. Yeah. So, so, so multimodality is, is a, an important part of, of this, as you've just explained. Um, and obviously in travel, we're used to having distribution systems that have, that, that obviously the main ones that have come out of um, the aviation sector. Of, uh, there's, there's three main ones there that we know very well. And then you've got middle middlemen, I guess, distribution middlemen in, in hotels and so on. What, what, what is it that's different about what, what you're doing compared to what is traditionally in the market? I think, you know, when we look at this, like we, we, we see that you need to have a, a potential to drive a true multimodal, one, you know, booking, but also the fulfillment and servicing element of this. Mm -hmm. And what I mean with that is that, you know, all that you mentioned, right? And some of these guys are probably even, you know, in our system today as aggregator or suppliers, uh, but there isn't anyone that really cracked the nut of, of driving this into one unified, you know, API or one unified distribution channel where you can combine, you know, first and last mile together with the hotel, together with the train, ferry, bus, uh, and our component of, for sure, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think that's really been missing. Uh, and, and, you know, that drives bad user experience because you are on different platforms when you need to rebook or if something happens. I think that's one of the key drivers. The other key driver is the technology complexity in a lot of existing ones today. If, if I'm a reseller that wants to join up and try to sell travel today, it's very, very complex. Uh, it takes a lot of time. Some suppliers need you to certify you, you know, you need to get an integration slot. It just takes ages. And, and if you look at where technology has gone and when you talk to modern source companies or developing hubs, you know, you should be able to drive this in, in, in a few weeks and, and, you know, some months tops uh, that integration process. And I think that's where we're putting a lot of effort into that and, and, and driving that, that, that part. Yeah. Final part, I think, is just cost, right? I mean, the, the fact that, you know, a lot of the technology and supplier segments out there today is extremely costly for for the airline right and you know i 
I, you know, at some point talked to an airline uh, CEO, we talked like the best way to be, you know, profitable in, in the travel landscape is to be a supplier to a, to a, you know, airline is not for sure not being an airline. And, and I think, you know, you, you know, some of that is true. Right. And, and, and with technology, I think there is a, you know, a, a, with the technology shift that is happening now, there is a key momentum as well to drive into, to more cost-efficient way of, of delivering these services. Yeah. What, what is that technology that's driving it then? I mean, what, what, what's, what's wrong with existing legacy tech in, in travel and what, what is, what are you using that, that solves those problems and why does it solve those problems? I think combination of things, right? I think, you know, we have lucky enough to build, you know, from a blank paper in, in the modern world where we can use new technologies that, that are, you know, more cost efficient, you know, better uh, in, in many ways. We can leverage fully the cloud's technology, right? I think you probably saw uh, there was an article, I don't remember if it was Skift or whatever, but that, you know, looked at the Sabre and Google partnership where it was supposed to be millions of dollars of spend, but actually, you know, it has, you know, has not really come to light and none of these suppliers and, and existing, you know, incumbents have been able to move to the cloud in, 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 in a good way. And obviously us leveraging those cloud providers uh, out there, including Google and, you know, AWS, obviously gives you a true advantage in terms of scalability uh, and, and cost advantage, uh, if you look there. But also the fact that you know we're building on top of new technology in, in a modern way, not not bound by the edifact standards of, of for example, in the airline industry, uh, yeah. in the train industry as well. You see a lot of technology being built in house from the monopolistic days of of, of train operation in Europe, uh, and you know that drives just the maintenance and sheer operational cost, which is which is which is big. Yeah. But some of those, I mean, some of those traditional players that they're, they're heavily embedded in the industry. That that technology, in some ways, drives the industry. It's at the core and the heart of the industry. Do do you see yourself as being a replacement for that? So are you are you disaggregating or dis disintermediating that, or are you becoming a kind of super intermediary where you 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 aggregate the aggregators, if you like? I think, I mean, we, we, I think to some extent we are dis disaggregating some of the existing suppliers at, at, at the end, I think, but we are also obviously aggregating the aggregators, so to say, in, in that way, we, we, we source from where we can, but we also want to make sure that we do this at, at the lowest cost and in a more cost efficient way towards the operators, right? And having too many layers of aggregators is also going to come at a, at a, you know, too steep price, I would believe in, in certain verticals, et cetera, right? Uh, uh, so yes, uh, but I think the key thing for us is, is getting as much content as possible uh, to the resellers uh, and, and making sure that you can drive that true end-to-end -end and door-to-door -door experience in, in, in one, you know, one booking uh, with, with, with also the post-booking benefits and the pre-travel, uh, the, the pre-travel, we, 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 we tend to call that in tune on time, but you know, making sure that the passenger and the traveler get the right information at the right, right time post booking because today's world is also very driven on optimizing for the transaction okay want to sell the ticket but then what happens automatic boarding automatic reseating automatic uh, you know rebooking on, on in terms of delay etc cetera, etc cetera. there is a huge amount of work uh, that that can be done and which hasn't been done in in that space in order to drive customer satisfaction and and experience up yeah you, you, you mentioned cloud a minute ago, and then you also hear about sort of APIs in this world, and this is what you're dealing with. For, for the layman out there, without getting too technical, um, just just explain what what that really means in practical terms. What what are we talking about when we talk cloud? What are we talking about when we talk APIs? No, but, but if, if you know if we talk about the cloud, right? And I agree, there's a lot of kind of buzzwords and and a lot of a lot of lingo out there and i think you know even in our industry so when we start with, with that i think there is also a, a way of where 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 we are today is because we're also blocking the entry from people outside this world to come in because we have all of these things we talk about the pnr and we talk about void and you know all of these lingos in in the travel travel space and i think that needs to change but but having that said i mean cloud cloud in that way is obviously leveraging the fact that you have big huge server farms which is using modern and new technology, you know, which is driven by a lot of different suppliers, but obviously Amazon Web Services and, and Google and Microsoft being key drivers of that. And uh, what that means is that rather than having, you know, your own hosting environment and site where you have, you know, thousands of servers, which you need your own employees and, and that hardware that which you need to buy, you can now just tap in basically on a tap, uh, you know, from, from these suppliers with capacity. So, yeah. 
if there is less, you know, if there's less traffic during the night in some region uh, for transactions, uh, you can just, you know, pay less and, and drive down, uh, dial down that, that capacity. But you can in two seconds just scale that up if you see that there is a huge demand for, for server capacity. Uh, automatically, that can scale up and you yeah. pay for what you use. So basically, they're just leveraging the, the sheer amount of volume in that, that, that space. And I think that, that but, but not only that, I would say, it's also the technology shift in the sense that a lot of the services that these cloud providers has created, you know, just makes a lot of things more cost efficient and tech in, from a technology standpoint, a lot better. So there's a lot of more new technologies that you can leverage out there, uh, which which also drives that in in a, in a good way. And and, and API, think, APIs are just that API is the connectivity, but isn't it? It's the it's yeah, one, exactly. one system so they, talking to another, and and and, exactly. and actually, that's quite difficult. To, that has been quite difficult to do, but crazily so. Yes, absolutely right. And I think. I mean, we've been in the industry long enough to kind of understand all the complexities, right? So what we've, you know, we, we what we have done, right, is abstracting a lot of the old legacy stuff that is still there and which you which you need to take into consideration and you need to do. But if you abstract that and 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 then create a connectivity layer, which which then is much easily, you know, for developers to code against, yeah. uh, with you know modern standards, so to say, in how to do that. And to explain that a little bit better in maybe layman terms, but it, it's really kind of uh, thinking about it as you know the the language that you speak uh, between these different uh, systems, right? And in, in in the old world, this was all very much more complex, uh, and and you know the way we're doing it now and leveraging once again kind of the the last years of, of, of development in the, in, the, in the technology space uh, using modern proper programming languages, but also, you know, the API standards of, of the modern day, which just drives that, you know, shift being, being able to do much more quick. Yeah, and, and I know uh, Junction's got a number of elements to it, one of which is this, is this open API aspect, yeah. um, which is all about allowing other people to develop on top of it. So you become like a, I think you used the analogy last November of being like a sales force where, yeah. where third party developers can come in and then they, they can create solutions and products and, and technology on the back of, of what, or what you've created. That, that, that's, that's sort of your vision, isn't it, for, for Junction? Exactly. And I think that we are really doubling down the efforts on, on, on that level right now. I think the key thing in which I think has blocked innovation in this industry a lot is, is the fact that there hasn't been a good way for that open ecosystem to work, right? There is a big amount of players and we are, not, we are never going to be the guys that innovate everything here, right? And I think that's the problem. We've had a lot of, you know, incumbents to that extent that want and, 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 you know, maybe have had the need because the technology landscape has not made it possible to 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 collaborate uh, with different third parties and and across the board but I think there is so many different great programmers and developers and and companies out there that are doing tiny bits uh, within the whole ecosystem and I think making sure that you open up that ecosystem in order to drive that in as I said an open API model where everyone can exchange uh, you know information but also you know leverage on the junction platform to, to build new software and, 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 and you know, at, at the end of the day, right, it's an, it's more becomes more of like an app store model yeah. where, you know, anyone on the junction platform can say, okay, that's a cool thing someone has done. And like, they can add that on top and, and refine uh, what, what output they get from junction in, in a good way. Yeah. And, and, and the other thing is moving towards as well as kind of an app store style is, is almost a Netflix style, um, a subscription basis. I know that that's where a lot of technology is moving towards. You mentioned software as a service that opens up that ability to just sort of plug in and out as you as you need it, and, exactly. and even switch even switch platforms quickly if if one isn't providing what you need. Exactly, you subscribe exactly. to another one. I mean that 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 is where technology seems to be headed. Is is that is that yeah. how you see things developing? No, but for sure, right. And I, I think that's where we see some of these things. I mean, you might need, for example some support uh, with overflow in, on the reseller segment, or there might be other things which you can just tap into and, and, and buy that capacity for one or two months from, from some of the suppliers in that kind of app store or third-party network. There might be that you are in need of, of certain of the junction modular functionality for just a period of time, uh, depending on what you do. And, and to your point, right, you have that subscription model where you, where you tap in and out uh, depending on your need. And, and, doesn't get locked in as as maybe you know the the, the historical uh, model has been in in that way. Yeah, 
Yeah. What well, one one thing with any technology company, especially with a new one like um, like yourselves, like Snowfall, is is um, huge amounts of trust is required for any company to, to work with, especially a, a new entrant. You know, I mean, you, you are essentially trusting your company with a third party. Yep. Um, how, how do you you know intend to build that trust in an industry that I, I think you know there's been probably plenty of examples down the years of, of technology partnerships not working and people be, be coming out of this in, in pretty bad ways being pretty heavily burnt with their with their tech it, it, how do you get over that potential barrier to getting a new brand into this sector i think i mean there's a combination right i mean it's it's not just one single answer to that i think but i think where, where we're coming from so i think we have a good history of traction and and in 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 being able to deliver on on the technology piece right i think we know the industry we know we have the domain expertise I think a lot of players that have come in and, and trying to do bits and pieces in this uh, have, you know, maybe lack that trust in, in the sense of that an operator reseller, you know, would, wouldn't necessarily think that they probably understand what they're doing and how the business operates. And I think we have that, we have that knowledge, right? We've, yeah. We're one of the few guys that has been out there uh, really working across the board model to model uh, with train operators, with ferries, with airlines. On, on, on a lot of different projects in the past and, and, and delivering great pro products and services, right? Uh, I think that's one. I think we, we, we are at a point where we're you know, heavily good you know, backing uh, from our investors, uh, which, is, which is obviously important to, to show that we are here to stay and, and are going to be around. And I think you know, combine that with the last couple of years events, uh, you know, mostly because of the pandemic, right? I think there is also now a, in the travel industry, a big, big push for, uh, you know, really making a lot of this happen, right? Because I think it's ripe for, for disruption. I think you see what's happened in a lot of the operators, layers of bureaucracy, layers of management levels has been taken away. I think Lufthansa, the CDO uh, was at the World Aviation Festival and spoke about that the pandemic has in that way been very good, you know, that, that really drives that in, in innovative segment. So I think, yeah. We, you know, combining those things, I think we are we are in good in, in a good position to kind of be one of the driving forces in in, in disrupting this industry. Yeah, to tell us a little bit a bit more about the background to the to the company then, Stefan. You said Junction was many years in the building. So what, yeah, what, 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 what where did you get? How did you get to where you've got to today? How does Snowfall yeah, I think, start? Exactly. I mean, we, we, I mean, we started out in in the travel industry actually just you know building a lot of lot of commercially oriented sauce products for for airline industry initially, right? Mm -hmm. And, and then that kind of drove us into other segments of, of the business, including, you know, connectivity. Uh, when Wi-Fi came, uh, where we built a lot of, a lot of software and powering a lot of the, the existing Wi-Fi providers out there today. I think uh, we then kind of understood the multimodal market, you know, driving further into working with train and bus and ferry operators. And I think that's when we saw that, okay, we've built a lot of these pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. So Junction in that sense is a com combination of a lot of the source product that, 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 that we build throughout the years and that we're operating into you know, one, one platform uh, and, and driving, uh, driving that forward. And uh, so for us, it wasn't just kind of coming from, the, from like, okay, we're gonna build this and, and really starting from nothing. We, you know, we're leveraging on a lot of the, the sauce product that we have out there today and and driving that into kind of building that ecosystem and and, and driving that distribution in, in that way yeah okay and and you're 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 obviously a Europe, european company um, yep. is that important um does that help you understand maybe the complexities of the european market more than some others potentially what what does that, does that make a difference or is, is what you're developing really sort of uh, potentially generic for the for the, for the global travel industry I think it is generic for the global industry, but I think, you know, if you come into what we're doing, if we truly want to drive multimodal in that way, I think there isn't, you know, a better place than Europe to do that, right? I mean, if you look at the US uh, market, we, you know, and, and I would argue that there is for sure uh, a, you know, multimodal aspect in, in, in the US as well. But if you look at, you know, how Europe works with, you know, you know more complex regulations, more countries, even, you know, we now have EU and, and the fourth railway package, which is kind of helping some of that on the railway side. There is still that multimodal trip uh, is obviously even more core in, in, in Europe at the moment, right? And you have the sustainability push, which is, 
you know, global, but Europe yeah. is, you know, more leading that way, right? So for sure, I think being being centered in Europe has, has a great advantage uh, in understanding a lot of these complexities when it comes to com com combining the multimodal journey, for sure. Yeah, uh, and just give an idea of what 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 does your um, you know, your 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 target customer look like then? I mean, you, you mentioned bringing new people into travel, so that that I guess that yeah. could, could be anybody, and no, it's I not could... necessarily the travel industry. But are you also exactly looking right. at, at you're looking at traditional players saying, look, what you've got at the minute does it does the job, but we can do it better? Or how, yeah, how, absolutely. How, where, do you think, where do you think you're going to have the best the best chance to sort of get new customers in? I, I think, I mean, if you look at it, right, I mean, it's a diff in the ecosystem is, is, you know, so if you look at the content side and operator side, it's obviously everyone operating travel, but we also see yeah. getting some of these newer players in, which is looking at things differently. So you have here in the US where I'm right now, for example, you have some of these players, which is semi, you know, commercial traffic, but also to some extent on demand. We're bringing some of those kind of semi-private, you know, flights. You have JSX of the world, for example, which is which is a carrier that started doing that. So we want to bring, you know, those kind of new entrants in um, on, on the operator side as well as the kind of more than traditional airlines or train operators uh, in there. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of push uh, new entrants, you know, e even from that side on, on train, you're seeing a lot of interesting startups on, on the train space in Europe. Yeah. On the reseller side, uh, for sure, uh, I think we, we were already having great traction on, on the kind of more traditional uh, players where, where basically we can just do it better. We have more content. Uh, they get what they have today from us, plus a lot more because we have that multimodal content where they can do that uh, and, and book that in, in, in one go. Uh, but the technology as well is better. Like, so we can, you know, the fulfillment, the automation, the whole process flow is much, much more optimized, uh, yeah. which which gives them better technology, lower cost uh, in that way. I think the key key driver in that as well is that we have a very aggressive model where we kind of help our partners get in. So whether that's with you know very steep discounts initially, or even we help actually cover some of the costs for our customers in order to make the transition, uh, in order to kind of re remove any barriers of entry uh, in that way. Yeah. We're also very key to see, and we're having a great in, you know, discussions with some newer players, right? Where you're seeing some of these, as I said, super apps, where when we now make it easy to book travel, you don't might, for example, with us, if you don't want to have your own IOTA license, you can, you know, you can leverage on ours and, 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 and these things, right? You're then opening up to, to interesting app developers and in, 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 you know, primarily maybe the fintech space, but also others who want to kind of drive uh, some of these sales uh, and, and, and be able to drive an end-to-end -end experience. Uh, and that's quite interesting. So I think we're going to see a lot of interesting things on how travel is being sold uh, in the next years to come, because when, yeah. we, when we make it easier to, to, to you know, digest and, and integrate, then uh, you know, we, we, we're going to see a lot of that. So I think we, we are obviously here for everyone, but I, you know, initially now we're obviously seeing quite interesting tractions on all levels of on, on the reseller side yeah so on the, on, on the globes at the nights of the globes the room will be full of operators particularly operators and agents there'll be lots of suppliers yeah. there as well who know that interested in plugging in their content in the, the, the one end exactly but but those travel agents and those operators I mean, they, they they are constantly trying to differentiate themselves and they can do that on customer service knowledge and all that yeah. stuff which is fantastic um, but this is an opportunity to diver diversify and to show how different they are in terms of the actual product they can put together. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's the kind of final word for me on that is really, I think it's, it, it needs, you know, I think with Junction empowers, right? you know, yes, we have a better technology on the transactional space, so we have more content, but it's also helping that, you know, post booking and pre-departure window yeah. where there is so much more that I think needs to be done towards the, the customer, right? You know how do you how do you know that that you know whether that's driving a better app experience if i'm a reseller where the customer gets real-time information on when you should leave to heathrow and wow maybe i should buy you know fast track because i'm a little bit late mm -hmm. or maybe i you know yeah it's you know delayed something is delayed you know how, how do you push that information uh at the right time uh you know to the right passenger i think there is so much more to be done and that's where i think for the resellers we can leverage that in order to differentiate and drive a deeper customer experience value for sure. Yeah, I just I just came back from from Barcelona and attended the World Mobile Congress there, and yeah. actually it was whaling that took me out there. So one of the IAG carriers, um, yeah. and they want and they were actually talking about multimodal, both specifically talking about multimodal, yeah. and they were involved in the session. 
Um, and I think what, one of the key issues that was brought up there is that the technology is there to do this. This isn't a problem. This isn't a technology problem anymore. You can do multi multimodal. You can do the things you're talking about because of the, the tech allows it. Some of the issues are around more like regulatory issues. There's issues around you can have a lot of different um, suppliers in, a, in any given chain. So it's who owns the who owns the customer. Which, which, which then you get issues around data usage and data ownership and so on. So there was, there were still things to work out in travel um, to take us to this take us to this place. But it, but it's not the technology that's stopping it anymore. Is that is that a fair assessment? I think I mean yes, I, I, absolutely right. I mean we are here now, and, and then you know the technology is here. Uh, I think we've also left, managed to kind of figure out some of these regulatory things that are there, right? Yeah. Now, and, and, and that ultimately goes down to a mindset problem, right? Because I think there is a lot of things and I've had huge discussions and long discussions with a lot of different operators and, on, 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 and you know, yeah, we can't do this. Why can't we do this? And then people might even think that there is a regulatory aspect to it when it isn't. And how do we do this? And I think, I think it's, 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 it's even more than that. I think it's just a pure mindset thing where I think every travel operator and content provider in this industry needs to start thinking about themselves as you know delivering a part of the chain rather than thinking they are so much different than every other uh, vertical of travel right i've been at major train conferences where everyone's you know when you talk about how airlines does it yes that's how Ireland does it but it's not for us we are a train company mm -hmm. yes but at the end of the day you know people are traveling from point a to b via point c and potentially d there is multiple components in there, but you know that's what you know and, and the experience for the passenger is. And I think it's it's yeah. important to kind of keep that in mind at all times. Yeah, you you, you mentioned sort of it, the pandemic. We can't talk about anything at, at the moment without referencing yeah. that. We've had two very disruptive years, particularly for travel. I mean, probably travel's been yeah. the most disrupted of all the the industries. What what what's that? What has that done to change mindsets? Do you think? I mean, do you think now that 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 out of every crisis there tends to be a reaction is the reaction for travel going to be one of uh, need to change is it going to be one where we're going to see a lot of innovation in the next few years a bit a bit like maybe like like we saw after the 2008 financial crash we saw the fintech revolution yeah. happen. is is that think, what you I think, think is going to happen very much so i think very much so i think where we're seeing this going right i think is is you know all the travel operators have to challenge a lot of the things to your point like the existing kind of status quo a lot of legacy stuff has always been there. A lot of people have challenged it, but it's never been like, oh, it's too too hard to do now. And like, let's focus on something else. Now, everyone have to focus on it. Like the balance sheet, on the, if you're a travel operator today, is not very, very, very strong. Uh, the pandemic has really taken its toll, but that has to, to, to that point. When crisis like that happen, people need to be forced as you to be innovative. And I think that's what's happening a lot. And the conversations are in many ways much easier to have now than pre-pandemic in in terms of how we change and disrupt this industry. So, yeah. you know, I, I am certain you're going to see a lot of disruption. And, and you know, I think, you know, your analogy on, on, on the fintech there is, is completely right. Yeah, I, I, you mentioned the balance sheet. So, there, I mean, there are there is going to be budgetary issues around this. You know, companies aren't necessarily going to have the, the, the funds to invest in huge, great tech changes. Um, so that could potentially be a barrier to no change. You might argue, well, that, that will mean there won't be any innovation because people won't be able to invest in technology. What, what's going to what's going to make that not be the case? Why is that not the case? I think we are, we are leveraging that a lot, right? And we're seeing other suppliers and, and, and partners in the market doing the same thing, right? Where we basically remove those barriers, right? Because we are yeah. helping that innovative and we, we basically we re reimburse those kind of budgetary issues to do those kind of changes that are needed in order to truly drive that, that, you know, that change. But I also think that, you know, if you're going to need to be around, you're going to need to have to prioritize that. So I think you're already seeing it, right? Even some of the larger airlines, which have had made, you know, and, and smaller ones for sure as well, which even have those constraints, they're starting and, and they have started to drive this because they understand if you're going to need to be around and drive this and, and be around in, in the future, you're going to need to challenge some of that status quo. So yes, yeah. I, I guess one of the answers to that is is if you haven't got the budgets, then you don't do it yourself. You find an ex expert to yes. do it for you who does exactly. it at scale and therefore does it more efficiently. Exactly right, yeah. and I, and and you're seeing you're seeing a lot lot of that happen, right? And I think we are you know we are one of those guys out there right now that that really helps you know to your point helps do that at scale, but also have a business model where we we share the risk to some extent because that's what yeah. we do. We, we don't say that pay us up front and then see what happens. We are not like the legacy players that charge us 
crazy amount of upfront fees or implementation fees or professional services fees. We want to be there and, and, and share the, you know, share the burden to some extent because we believe in, in the return of travel, but we also know that our technology and our, you know, what we are delivering will ultimately drive value to, to, to the ecosystem. Yeah, I, th I think you alluded to this before when you're describing the kind of kind of custom you might bring on, particularly from the Travel Weekly, the Globe's kind of audience. Yeah, um, and th and that is that um, this isn't a sort of all or nothing necessarily. That that you can transition to a new technology platform. Exactly. Um, you know, it's not all a big bang. You can do it in in stages and not yeah. not have to move everything in one go. You you know, and test exactly. it as you, and test as you're going along as well. That that's the kind of, yeah, that's the way you'd see people transitioning with it. Definitely, definitely, right. So we, you know, we're, you know, we, we, you, you know, try before you buy, almost, right. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's really, you know, also shifting part of, of different vertical of supply. Uh, there is multiple ways of doing it, right. But there is not, you know, you don't have the need to kind of do, you know, a complete kind of migration and shift from one to another during one day, right. And and I think that that's also drives some confidence in 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 you know how we how we get this to the market properly. Yeah. Well, look, the time, time's nearly up, but just a quick, before we finish, just a, a quick thoughts on, on where you think we are now as, a, as an industry. Um, you, you know, the UK in particular appears to be going quickly down the route of opening up post-COVID. Uh, I've been to Spain. There's a few more restrictions around being around yeah. in Spain. It's, it, it, it's certainly nothing like it used to be. So there's a lot of positivity. Um, I think probably the early year boom um, was delayed somewhat by Omicron, but but by the time we get to March and by the time we get to the Globes, I think there'll be a lot of positivity around. Do you, do you yeah. share that? And are there still some potential bumps in the road, do you think? And, 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 and if, if, if we are now on the path to sort of a long-term recovery, obviously that, that's, that is good news for the kind of things we've been talking about in terms of shifting models and, and looking to the future. Yeah, I think I I think I mean there is still going to be some maybe minor bumps on the road. I think we are you know past uh, the worst. And as to your point, I think in UK you're seeing the rebound quite quickly. Mm -hmm. I think I'm pretty happy. I called this out quite early. I think a lot of the kind of doomsday people saying you know it's going to take until 2025 until we see the return of travel in pre-pandemic way. I think we're already seeing the pent up demand. I think we obviously different parts of the world right now, and we're still and you know we have to be conscious of. of Unfortunately, some of the, the part of the world which hasn't been fortunate to, to get the vaccination, et cetera, we're still seeing obviously some issues. But I think overall we, we're past, you know, we're past, you know, the, the, the big hurdle. And I think we're seeing, you know, great uh, return. And I think there is a great, uh, you know, expectation uh, on, on from our side, uh, you know, and, and I'm, I'm quite confident that we'll see the return of travel now. Uh, with, as we said, a lot of inno innovation, a uh, lot of pent up demand, and and uh, you know, I'm, so I, I, I am, I'm quite confident we're over the 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 big bump. I mean, there might be some some smaller bumps coming 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 along, but I, I think you know the restrictions are going away now. We, we're not going to see a lot more new restrictions coming in 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 the next you know year or so. Yeah, yeah. And it's certainly the case that the, the businesses that are around today still trading have shown unbelievable resilience. I mean, they've taken taken help where they can get it, but to just to be here today is is quite remarkable. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Look, Stefan, th thanks very much for that. It's been really Thank good, you. really good chat. We're as, as I said, we're delighted that we've got you involved in the Globes. It's always a fantastic night. I don't know if you've been Thank before. You. It'll be your first, will it? Yeah, it will be my first. So yeah, it's yeah. our first, and you know, it's going to be very, very, very excited about it. Yeah, no, so, so are we. So we're looking forward to that and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in London then. So thanks very much. Thank you.